about this widescreen. But my boss of an auntie. we can do. Hold on. Let's see if it allows me. You can't rotate your phone down the line. How dare they? How dare they say that? Hi guys. I'm just working out the technical stuff. you guys this way because we've already committed to it I don't know if I've committed to it hold on a minute I'm a black woman I could change my mind <laughs> just giving you guys just a little taste just a little, little, little something just a little taste that we're going to go on today all right Oh, man. Anyways, guys, I hope everybody is, hope everybody is well. Sending love and light, sending love and light, sending love and light, right? Sending focus, sending grounding, right? I hope everybody is well. You see how I'm smiling ear to ear? You see, you see how my, my, my smile is so bright? I look like my youngest right now. I remember being like, like four hours old realizing like, oh my God, I look like my son. <laughs> he doesn't look like me. I look like him. Okay. I look like him. Um, man, I don't know where to start. But I want to tell you if nobody else has told you today that, you know, you are loved. And, you know, happiness is yours if you want it, okay? Nothing can make you happy. You got to have, like, an inner joy. Got to have an inner joy. Some of you, you know, we're losing our inner joy. I understand. I understand. Trust me, I do. You know, this whole uh, season that we've been going through, it caught me off guard. I want to say, I feel like I was the most caught off guard because I love my own company. I'm okay with like being alone, right? But then sometimes it's like you want like more company or you want to be in a social setting. And that's not always, you know, that's not possible all the time. So it can be a little tough. It can be a little tough, but... For the greater good, we have to um, do what is best and be responsible. Um, I'm smiling ear to ear because I'm gonna be able to talk to you uninterrupted. Okay, I am, honey, the little people are on their own little event today. So I'm able to talk to folk. See, that's probably why I haven't done a live is because I'm I'm working on what I'm working on. I am homeschooling. Hey. Yay. Hey. I'm homeschooling. Okay. And I still have my domestic responsibilities. So it hasn't been an easy road. So because I am um 
we're going to be fully uninterrupted to talk to you. That's why I'm doing this live. Okay. So excited. Don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the music that I have been sharing with you. Right? Music is good. Music is life. I love music. Um, I remember when I used to sing with a choir. Um, I remember when I used to sing with a choir. The it was one of those like real bourgeoisie churches in um in Manhattan. <laughs> Bourgeois. Okay. And our um the main the lead the lead uh, choir director for the entire organization of the church, not so much the group that I sang with, but the main one, he was doing a presentation and it was something he said that was so profound and you know, that, and that was my season for being there, like just to hear this and it never left me. And that is, you know, he who sings, he, he prays twice. Yeah, I've never forgotten that. Don't you love those like amazing moments in life where you kind of like, get some little nuggets to kind of like go with you wherever else it is that you go. Um, so yeah, he who sings, he prays twice. And I've always held that close to me because I love to sing and I'm a very like devotional kind of person. Like, yeah, yeah, we won't, we won't get into that because we, we're not, we're not, you know, we here promoting religion. We ain't doing that. But I do encourage you to have a relationship with God. That's very... That is important. That is mandatory. It's like what's gonna, that's what's going to keep you sane um, with all of the hurt people that you have to navigate among in life and um, that you have to work with, that you're related to. Toxic, 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 right? That we're friends with, that we were like, you know. So for you to be able to navigate through all of those different like scenes and times and seasons and situations you have to have you know your faith rooted in something right but i'm not here to promote religion we don't like that because i am just yeah i'm not the lady for that but but you know one thing that i definitely do promote regardless of what faith you are in and what faith that you follow that you take your time to have a true relationship with god and that you worship him in or her however you see the almighty okay um that you worship the almighty in truth and with vigor right with like with passion because if you do not do it with passion I feel like it's a certain kind of mindset of an individual right like I myself I've been through some experiences in my life that if I was not the edge snatching Shamrandi, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. I would have been dead in a ditch somewhere by what, whoever, whatever. And you know, you have to have a certain kind of like tenacity, a certain kind of militancy, and you need to carry, let that carry over even into your faith, right? Like me, I'll, I'll, I'll probably chop your ass, right? If being in the right environment, you know, don't come walking up on me in Burbies, honey, and my, you know, where I'm from, you know, you might, you might get chopped, right? But, <laughs> right, but that same, that same kind of tenacity is the same way I approach everything else. Like, what? You want me to, you want me to compromise who I am? You want me to be somebody else for you because it's going to make you happy? I'm not that lady. When it's an interior design, I'm not a yes woman. Nope. No, nope. that's why my good, my good, you know, my white lady customers, honey, they like me because I'm not here to come and like, kind of like massage your idea of what you think is right. No, if there is an incorrect or if there is something that needs to be, that you need to simmer down your worry about or you, you know, you need wise um, counsel when it comes to design, I'm here for you, right? At the end of the day, you gotta know why you're there. When I'm in church, I'm here to worship God. When I'm here to interior, when I'm here to provide consultation for interior design, for your bathroom, for your kitchen, I want you to not make tacky ass mistakes. 
right? I don't want you to go and buy these brass knobs because you think they're fantastic and then you went and bought this chrome faucet because it was on sale. I'm not, I'm not the yes lady for that. You may want to rethink that or that's a hell no, right? I never tell anybody no without a reason. So I say all of that to say is that, you know, your personality is not something you want to kind of get rid of. And then there was something else that, um, you know, we were talking about nuggets that, that kind of like stayed with you. Years ago, I heard um, T.D. Jakes minister about something and he was like, you know, this is me paraphrasing, right? I'm not quoting him. I'm telling you where the statement is being inspired from. I heard a sermon and how I understood it was if you have a strong personality trait for you not to let um, basically religion or what you think religion is to water down that personality because that personality serves a purpose even in the kingdom of God, whether you're a Christian, whatever, whoever it is, it serves a purpose. And I totally believe in that, right? So I'm the same lady, even though I'm like, oh, you know, I'll talk about chop somebody down. I'm the same lady where it's like when I'm in church and I'm and it is it is time for worship. I want us all to be worshiping. I don't need you here spectating. Oh no, honey, because I'm going to what I consider the throne. I'm going to you know my place of serenity. Where I find strength and I know that what I'm requesting is being answered. I know Olua is hearing me. So if you think you coming to watch me, you better go find another hobby, right? And I'm always disturbed when I have to hear people who are in clergy talk about that. Because it's like, well, why did you come? Why did you leave your house? You came to see where everybody else is? If you want some of it, you got to join in. Yes. There was a woman I used to sing with. In Chelsea, um, and her name was, what was her name? Oh my God, her name is slipping me right now. How dare I? She's Cookie. That's That was the name we called her, Cookie. And she used to sing in choir with, let me see, was she an alto or she was a, she was an alto, okay? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a soprano, I'm a soprano. When, when I don't have that hoarse voice from talking to them little people. You see how they be coming in? That's why we have this live right now. Because they're not here, right? <laughs> but anyway, so Cookie, we sang choir, gospel choir in a church that was um, really like Anglo-Saxon white. We, they just happened to have a gospel choir, okay? And... We invited another choir from someplace. I think they came from Philly or something like that. And when I told you we had church up in there, oh my God, honey, the holy like the, the, all the angels was present. Like it was, it was a whole mood. Okay, it was a whole vibration. It was a whole mood, and we just remember like people just being in a place of like, you know, observation, right? But. The people that were familiar with spirituality that stems from African spirituality, okay, um, he was like, oh, give me some of that. And Cookie, the first one, she's like, yeah, give me some of that. I want some of that. She knew how to tap into what that is, right? That's, that, if you're totally, if you're into esoteric thinking but you're not religious, it's the same thing like, it's along the same lines of, um, just being in the right, being in the same frequency, right? That frequency of love, life, love is the highest frequency, right? That's why, you know, I've mentioned in past, in past lives that we cannot expect love from people that are going through this transition and they don't like this, they don't like the, 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 the track of it, okay? What they need to have is empathy because love is asking for too much. But love is the highest vibration. And if everybody operated in true love, People are going to have to let go of a lot of trauma for them to get to that place, okay? Some people are inherently clothed with it. I know people that are like that. Um, and I will say that I am one of those people, right? Because, like, I love my friends just like how they are. Now, the minute they can't love me how I am, that's when I start reevaluating our relationship, right? Because I'm just like, oh, this may not work for me, okay? So love is a <laughs> And if everybody is operating in a state of love, you literally can change the trajectory of everything going on around you. 
it's like another little example. Let me give you a little layman example for those of you that may not know. It's like you being somebody who you enjoy a cup of coffee and you know secretly why you enjoy that cup of coffee. It's like somebody who smokes cigarettes, you know secretly why you enjoy cigarettes, the, the high that that nicotine gives you. We're talking about something that is not stimulated by anything else. It's not stimulated by coffee. It's not stimulated by nicotine. It is just stimulated by gratitude. Don't you know how I just came to that right there? That's where it boils down to. That's what it boils down to. So when you go now to a place of worship, like a church or a mosque, and you cannot get into the vibe. Like if imagine you go to a mosque. Because I've witnessed this before. There's a lot of spiritual moments you can have. You see, if you just let your mind be free a little bit. <laughs> but I have witnessed in an, an Islamic environment. The beautiful singing of Islamic prayers. That's transcending. It's trans especially if it's a man and he has a high pitched voice and he has great articulation and he is a true worshiper. It 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 supersedes the language you're hearing. You feel it. That's like if you're a Christian and you can't deny the power of worship that comes from uh, West African worship singers that, you know, the music, right? It's a different level of humility it comes from, right? You, you, you cannot be staunch-minded to appreciate that, right? That's like somebody who totally finds peace in, in like, meditation. That's their food. If they don't meditate for a minimum of 20 minutes each day, they're not okay, that's all right. That's their place of worship, right? You got to respect people's places mentally a worship. You got to. But what I'm going to say is it's the same thing when you go into a church. And if you did not go there to worship, please do not obstruct the view. Do not obstruct the energy that's moving in that space, right? Don't obstruct it. Right? Don't come and hold it against me. I'm telling you, oh, I'm not religious. But then you see video of me, like, you know, I'm all up in church. Yes, I am in church. You, you, need to, you need some of what my, my prophet got. Okay. You need some of what he got. But he's in Miami. If you ain't in Miami, I can't help you. All right? But I remember when I found him. I remember when I found him. And... That's the way, the way I found him is how I approach everything. Like if this is for me, tell me what time and where you at. And I'm there. As long as you ain't over here trying to crush my woman spirit that I fought so hard to build to this, me you good, right? Other than that, I am devoted. I am, and when I say devoted, I mean like, when I say I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm just like that, right? That's why I had to do a video about um, in my life design topics, I talked about being devoted even in separation, right? This is why people can't properly co-parent. Because you, were, you weren't devoted to the connection that you made. It was just an itch that needed to be scratched, right? My connection, my past, my, my marriage, did I, you know, where I made my children, where my children stem from, that was, it was political. It was, it was. So with the, probably the wisest thing to do at that time, huh? We learn and we grow, huh? But I stand by it. That's why me, I'm not that lady. You're not gonna hear me over here. I mean, I mean, I may, you know, breed some men for filth, right? <laughs> because of the esteem they want to hold us at. But I'm a team player. Oh, oh yes, I'm committed even in that. Because I knew, I knew what my mission is. That's why you're not going to hear me uh, bashing all that woman's lip shit. That ain't for me. That ain't for me. That is for... That's for angry white women. They need to suss out their problems with their papa and their man and, and all the oppression they lived in. And, and it's, I, I don't know nothing about that. I'm not a white woman, right? So... 
I recognize the strength that black women have. I cherish it. I celebrate it. But I need a man. Oh, I'm that lady. I'm not trying to be out there chopping the wood myself. No, 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 no. I'm not that lady. Nope. Um, everybody has their job. And that's why when I was married, we were happy. I was happily married. Happily married. Now, some people were upset that I was happily married, but that's their problem. They can go and argue with their ancestors about that shit. I don't give a fuck, right? I was happily married, and and I'm happy to happily separated. Let me also include that. I'm happily divorced, right? I'm happily co-parenting, <laughs> right? I'm happily mothering my children, my beautiful black men that I have. I'm happily, happily doing that, right? Because I know... Uh, what I want for my sons and I know what I want for myself and I know what I want for my experience Right So yeah, I, I've done videos about that about people like, you know, trying to like Happily co-parent people, you know, that's a certain kind of love. What is that? That's probably like an agape love or something like that if you have a Bible in hand There's a chapter there's a book called Songs of Solomon yeah, you don't you don't know shit about intimacy, about respect, about matrimonial love until you understand the love that's described in the Songs of Solomon. Now, I'm not well versed in all the stories of of the Quran, so I cannot give you one to compare it to, right? But I know in in Orthodox Judaism, you know, there is that kind of you know, you are mine and I am yours, okay? But in the Psalms of Solomon, they talk about my lover, that's my sister, like the sibling. It has to be like a kind of like sibling understanding. And some people all was all up in arms about the nonsense that had you guys distracted off of your pan-Africanism when you were talking about the Jada and the entanglement and all of that stuff. We all need an entanglement every now and then. Remember, I said it's a ministry unto itself. I said that. Nobody don't, don't. Don't think, don't think nobody, I'm not under nobody's teaching of that. I'm not saying anybody that I sit under their teaching, they have taught me that. Nope. Let me just give y'all that little piece of mm, disclaimer. That's me. It's all Shimrondi. Okay? But that's a ministry unto itself. And the reason people could even exist, because this is not for everybody. And it's not your fault. Who it is not for, it is not, it does not make you less than or better than. That's what it is. If you exist in a fully one-on-one -on -one monogamous relationship, it's you and your partner, and you dare you cut anybody down to come and have an extra conversation with your husband or your man, that's okay. You don't know better. You don't know better. Because you don't own anybody. Just like somebody don't own you. I want there to be love served at the table, but you will not come to manage me like I am farm farm livestock that you own on this acre hell no right but people are their own individuals and I know I know how colonized Guyanese people think and I say that loosely because it really applies to a lot of us but I'm gonna speak about the people that I know okay this is why people that have sweet woman and road man and this lady, so and so, and so sweet, my, and all of this, because these people have found somebody else to have a different experience with. It doesn't mean that they are less than obligated or find an obligation. What it is that you guys have together, that might be too heavy for some of y'all. Y'all can't handle that. Y'all can't handle that. Listen, did any of you guys watch Dr. Uh, Brother Ish the other week? He is really, really gathering all of his thoughts, honey. If you don't know who Brother Ish is, then you need to go and find out who he is. Um, but ultimately, you know, my message is always going to be about love. And, you know, having empathy and knowing yourself and all of that. You got to get to know yourself. Because when you get to know yourself, you are not easily distracted or insulted by somebody else's passion that they have going on in their life. You're not distracted by that. Right. If you are a Caucasian white person, um, uh, you know, a, a magna person, whoever, and 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 you feel 
automatically your nerves are being scraped, it's because you do not have empathy and you don't have love. And you no, you do not. I said so. I said so. Right? In your life, you may think what you have is love, which is maybe it is. Maybe you do have a love and it is in this militant for what it is that you believe in, but it is not for you to go and automatically choose to say somebody else is of less value because they choose to appreciate themselves. No. Nope. It don't go that way. It don't go that way. You know. But spirituality is important, guys. And having faith is important. Um, and it is not something that is determined by your 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 personal religious mandate like the kind of mandate you put on yourself and because you have a mandate you think that yours is the only and the ultimate we do we were we were uh brought up thinking that excuse me i sat under that kind of um what do you call that it's not a discipline it's a <laughs> i don't have the word to tell you guys but yeah but it's doctrine it's a certain kind of doctrine. You know, a lot of us who were brought up in Christianity, we were, we were brought up in that kind of doctrine. In my in Guyana, where I'm from, and some, you know, there's West Indian countries too that, that have this um, particular group of Christian Christianity. It's seven-day Adventists. Oh, my goodness. They could be very, very dogmatic. They really, really can. And those that are are, are seven-day Adventists, I'm, I'm not against anything. There's, there's definitely... Um, a lot of good supporting um, basis for what they believe in. Now, the way they operate as a religion, no, I'm not. I'm not going there to worship. I've I've been to many Seventh Day Adventist uh, church services, right? But it's just not for me. It's all. Right. It's, not, it's not for me. It's all right, right? So you have to get to that place where it's like you can accept people for who they are, and you cannot if you cannot accept them for who they are, and I mean their true self. Right, because some people you even have to see them past the person they see themselves as. You understand what I'm saying? You have to be able to see people and appreciate them for the true person that beyond how they even see themselves. Because some people may take on an identity that is totally brought onto them from upbringing, from indoctrination, from culture, from colonialism. You know they. You can't take it out of them. It's stuck up in the fatty tissue. You understand? It's stuck, it's stuck up in the fatty mass. So it's not going anywhere. Okay? They're going to have to go through like some major, major purge for them to get to the place where they could truly, truly see their real self. That's, that is a lot of us. Right? That's a lot of us. Not limited to those that are African of Caribbean identity. Or those that are African under the identity of um, what you call it, what they call themselves, descendants of American slaves. I found out that it was a whole divide about that. Uh uh. Listen, I don't like dialogue like that. This is my opinion. I gotta keep putting in these goddamn disclaimers because somebody, you know, I don't want somebody to come. For me and I didn't send for you but I'm gonna tell you something you got to recognize when people are trying to input division you must me hypothetically I am born in Baltimore hypothetically right my birth certificate about to hit y'all real quick my birth certificate says I'm born in Baltimore, so my birth certificate is from the state of Baltimore. It says who my natural birth mother is who delivered me at the hospital, right? There are a lot of us, this is a sidestep, and I say us because the African American experience is not different than my own West Indian experience because my West Indian experience is not only shaped by a West Indian upbringing. It's also shaped by being me be living in North America. Okay? There are many of us where we know who the father of our children are. And those fathers are not listed on our children's birth certificate. 
So you see now, there's a whole group of you, okay, that want to participate in that great divide conversation and you don't got your baby father name on the child certificate. And the reason why is because African American people do not have themselves as a nation. That's why that's even important. So even within that level of paperwork, you need to have that kind of paperwork. But you ain't. And we understand why. Trust me, I get it. Me, I understand why. I get it. I get it. Because some things are done just because of survival. Right? That this country has shaped out for people. I get it. Right? But I'm going to tell you that living in the country of Brooklyn... Brooklyn and New York, New York City, part of New York State, okay, on the East Coast of North America. Um, there is a huge community of people that do not get religious wedding ceremonies at all. They use all, all, all of the social services that are possibly offered from the government and through the state, right? Okay. And they automatically do everything in a religious way, and they are a nation, but they are a nation without a country. You're probably wondering, what the f am I talking about? But I'm just telling you something, right? So even if you don't have a birth certificate registered with the state or who your baby daddy is. My prayer for a lot of African American people is to heal the relationships so they can properly co-parent for the sake of their children's well-being and the sake of their children's identity. Because these groups that are created to divide those in the African diaspora are going to want to fight and say, you can't be here physically because you are not a descendant of um, someone that is an American, an American descendant of slavery, and you're a Caribbean. I could never prove that I come from that. Never. And on top of that, West Indians are very proud people. You know why West Indians are very proud people? Because they are, they, they are about four generations deep in liberation with never going through Jim Crow until they came to North America. So because of that, it's a different mindset. That doesn't mean we don't love our African-American brothers and sisters any less. No, it's your experience is my experience. I went to the same school as you did, right? The same pools of, uh, what was that term they used to use all the time? Um, that uh, that diversity, inclusion, affirmative action, you have to do the same things, right? But I can never ever prove that I am a descendant of American slaves. I can never prove that. And that's the reason you guys need to have proper documentation. Even if it's not done through the state, you create your own handmade birth certificate. And y'all come to an agreement so your children know where they come from. All of it just be like oral, it just be like oral information. That's the reason why when you open up some of these Bibles, let me see if I have a, I don't know if I have a, a quality Bible around me. Let me see if it's in here. That's why some of these Bibles, especially the leather bound ones, they have a place in the beginning where you can put the background of the person. Right? You have to keep your own records. Because the records I have, I can never ever, I can never ever produce something that says, I am historically the offspring of African American um, based slave. I can't, I can't produce that. So that's why it is such an unnecessary 
you know, tool of diversion and division. And you guys got to be careful, especially if you see yourself as a progressive minded person. If you see yourself as a, as a pan-Africanist, you know, and then you over here changing to this and changing to that. You got to be careful because that is not any different than the tribalism and racism and classism and all the damn isms that are out here. That's, that's a bundle of a piece of bullshit. Okay. West Indian people are way too proud for us to go through trying to come and dig up all of that stuff. What? We can't prove that. I cannot prove it, right? Even my children, they cannot prove any connection to that, right? I'm a person, I, I uh, when I got married, um, especially when I got married to somebody that was from my country, especially, okay, is I did not get married for the sake of somebody seeking American citizenship. That doesn't work for me. Now, for some people, it's going to work for you, okay? Because your social pools are small, all right? And you think you have to go and find somebody and take them out of the true element of a man that they are. To... Listen, maybe I need to write about that, and I need to not discuss it. Because people are not going to, whatever. I, I could probably write about that topic. Because... Um, I have a lot of experience with that topic from things I've seen in my own family and you know where I come from and everything. Um, but it was important to me. So it was like, if, if you are from my country, you need to be able to have the same status as I have. And thank God, because fast forward, I didn't know back then what I know now, but fast forward, there's a reason behind that and it's really important for you to have that, right? That's why you cannot be mad as an African American. Please, just just take what I'm saying, right? Don't take assault, insult. Don't be so easily moved to be insulted. Don't do that, right? But think of thicken up your skin. Get some gratitude and all of that, so you aren't easily insulted by everything you hear. All right, but that's the reason why it was so important to me to, you know, when I made that when I made that choice. When I made that decision about who is it I'm choosing to have a family with, it's a political choice. It's a political choice, right? It's a political choice because now, fast forward, I have a child that needs to be able to have the same rights that I do, right? And not, and not confused about it. They know where they come from. Regardless if people wanted to see their parents in that union or not see their parents in that union, right? But all in all, I had to truly remain the person that I am. And that's a person that is about love. I am about love. I just don't want love from everybody. <laughs> but I am about love. Okay, nonetheless. All right? Because sometimes these fights that we try to take on as women and as black women, it's not our fight to have. It's, it's, it's not our fight to have. You know, people want to be out there fighting and campaigning for stuff. That's not their place to go and fight and campaign for. Now, if you feel called and it's your calling, that's one thing. But I have, I, I do my work in my own way, right? So we're not here to like bash each other. But you've got to be careful for these, these, these devices that are created so that is created to, to divide and cause divide. Because if you allow divide to come in, you are actually closing the door and closing the window on the opportunity to make yourself cognizant to something that could be useful to you later on in this life. And if you haven't realized that, with the shit that is going on right now, you are lost and nobody can save you. You are gonna have to find your way somehow to some kind of enlightenment. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. And you gotta be unapologetic about it. You know, like I'm really, really loving people that had this been three years ago, they probably wouldn't have said nothing in, in you know, for the public to hear because they're discouraged, right? That happens to a lot of um, African-American people that start, you know, they start going up in certain tax brackets 
right? The ones that are allowed to amass the kind of wealth they have amassed, the way they've amassed it, right? They are discouraged from really being their true selves. And a lot, there, there are some of those that are coming from those groups and they're realizing that hook or crook, live or death, I have to be in my truth. And that is sexy. That is truthful. That is good. That is a great place to be. Your ancestors can actually hear you because you're not sending out mixed signals anymore. I won't repeat that. Nope. And that's a good place to be, and I commend them. And, you know, what's going to happen is the more, <laughs> the more and more younger people realize and come to that level of enlightenment and understand their true power, and they give off that positive and great and right vibration, they're going to start attracting better and better and better quality of partners and mates and friends and circles, right? So you're no longer going to be like, kind of like this person trying to go along with the flow. Like this is what's mass, this is what's massly popular. This is what everybody, this is what I'm going to like. No, they come into the authentic self. So now... Eventually, the, the guys that are walking around talking about bitches and hoes, they can eventually stop addressing goddesses as bitches and hoes. Because now, they are taking full responsibility of who they choose to put into their life. This is why you're never going to hear me talk bad. I'm not going to be out here just on all out, just full on bashing my ex-husband. Nope. I chose him. I chose him with the knowledge that I had at the time I had it. Right? So my complaint can only go but so far because I chose him. Right? That's why I'm a writer. Not does he do everything? Do we see eye to eye all the time on everything? No, we do not. But does that make me love him less? Absolutely not. I have to love him. In that Songs of Solomon Love I'm talking to you guys about, if you didn't catch that, then you got to rewind. Because this is not about me. I have children. On top of that, I got sons. Me, I'm not a man. That touches upon what I said about that woman's lib. If you didn't catch that part, you gotta rewind. You gotta follow me. I be on this, I be on a crooked path sometimes. Right? That's the reason why. I can't be one of those ladies telling my baby, my baby, he ain't a hen, and you, you in there, you know, fighting somebody for some fucking chicken scratch. For what? For what? What is the bigger pro what is you have to recognize what your purpose is. You must. It's even when you're looking for a job. It's okay. If the job you can get is to is to it is to do a type of job, and to some people it is considered menial. You have to find purpose in what it is that you're doing for you to be able to do it successfully. I remember years ago, I worked in the mental health field. That was probably part of my journey of trying to understand people and understand my women relationships and to understand women and black women and, and everybody around me. Because people have different personalities based on who they are. And I used to work in the mental health field. And when I worked in the mental health field, my charge nurse, because um, my mom was a nurse too in that, in, in, within that field of medicine too at one point, but my charge nurse, she used to say, you know, when Shamrandi come, it's like having two people. She could depend on me. Oh yeah. When I came to work, I came to work. Okay? I wasn't there just trying to rack up overtime to just be there. No, I was there to utilize my personal skills. I was there to help people in their healing. Because not everybody is... is um, Mentally ill to the point where they are on um, unreversible mental medication. Because some of that medication that you ultimately are given, you can't come off of it. It's permanent. Right? It's like, it's like somebody gave you something incurable. You can't, it's, it may never ever come out of your system. But we know, you know, that's 
what, a, what that is. But when it comes to chemicals, it is like that. And I've witnessed that. I, I've gotten to see people that are like that where they are put on a certain kind of medication and the relapse happens when they try to get themselves off. They try to get to their higher selves and then they have a problem with that. And it's scary. It's not, it's not a pleasant, it's not a pleasant uh, experience. And I, and, you know, and, I have, and I have sympathy. I have empathy for people that went through things like that, right? I went through empathy, you know, I have empathy for people that went through things like that. So, you know, your mental health is really important. Very, very, very important. Protect it at all costs. You know, if that means that you got to cut out some of these relationships and friendships or give them a pause or a break, then you do that. And, and if your friends can't understand it, then they're part of the problem. Uh. <sighs> got to speak your truth, people. Got to speak your truth. Right, and those of you that are in a place of enlightenment, you gotta encourage your friends that are that there yet for them to get to that place. They gotta want, they gotta want, they gotta want better, and they gotta see better for themselves. You know, they gotta want, and they gotta see better for themselves. They gotta see themselves in a positive light. You know, that's where my my you know my coaching came from. Because people would just ask me. And, and I'm still, I'm always approached. Sometimes I'd be like, man, I don't think you need to come to me, honey, because I am trying to balance all this stuff I got going on. But there are some things that I've been through already. And I came through on the other side. And I appreciate that journey that I went through. So because I went, you know, I appreciate the journey that I went through. And I do not um, throw away the value of it. It allows me to be able to to coach other people through it, and and that's where I that's where you know some of the coaching that I've done in the past has come from, you know, especially with the young women and stuff like that, because you because some things just start sticking out. You're like, man, listen, that's one tool somebody really needs to have, and that let me give you an example. When I coach young younger women, one thing that every single one of them get, it doesn't matter who I tell it to is. I don't care how progressive, I don't care how women's liberated they are, I don't care. Is you need to know how to cook. I've been on that. You now realizing with that whole oh we won't we won't we're not gonna ignore what was going on with that um Popeye's chicken sandwich BS. Thank God I don't eat meat. You know, that thing had this America in a mess. The way people were on social media talking and promoting something as stupid and toxic as a chicken sandwich, you wish to God they were promoting mental clarity that way or promoting, you know, mental wellness or promoting, you know, black love and promoting strong families and promoting raising healthy children and free thinking children and, you know, and better eat. Like there was so many other things they could have been promoting. No, they promote in a goddamn chicken sandwich Stop. Right? See, that's that stuff that people get caught up in and it is all for vanity. It don't mean shit. It's not helping you. It's not going to help you improve. What is it helping you do? Well, get friends? What kind of friends? Are these people you even want to have a future with? Stop. People really got to get on it. So protect your mental health at all costs. Right? That's really, really important. So that's why I'm okay with... Uh, I'm okay with, you know, agreeing to disagree with some people. I'm okay with um, people getting their feelings hurt. Yeah, life is not a bowl of chocolates. It's not. Forrest Gump may have told you that, but it's not. And sometimes you got to hear some things that may scrape your nerve, and your nerve which is attached to the programming you've had up all of your life. I'm here to talk the truth. I don't know if this is this live is gonna get taken down. They're taking down some other ones that I have. Oh well. Hopefully some of y'all caught it. Right? You have to get to that place of of love. You gotta get to that place of love. Because if you don't get to that place of love, 
there's a lot of things that you are shutting yourself from experiencing. A lot of amazing things. Things that you've never eaten that you could taste. You are, you are stopping yourself from experiencing that. Right? Friendships that can give you a proverb from a place you don't know about, but can fully be to help you be introspective and, and get through a hurdle and get rid of some generational curse or misunderstanding or lack of education. Like, like repair, guys, repair. Right? This is why this is why many people cannot co-parent. Is you too busy hating from a place of programming? Right? You are busy hating from a place of programming. Even the guys that have children with women that they don't like and they never liked them from the very beginning, there was some kind of programming with your upbringing that caused you to develop that toxicity that made it okay for you to want to go and lay down and possibly cro cro procreate with a woman that you don't like. Who told you to do that dumb shit? You don't respect her? Then you don't respect yourself and you don't like yourself. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to agree with that. I'm all right with that. Praise God, I don't give a fuck about how somebody else thinks about my opinions. Right? This is why people cannot co-parent successfully. You think I like everything that my, my, my ex-husband now says? I don't. I don't. Right? You, you think that whatever woman my ex-husband brings into his life, I'm gonna, she's automatically my enemy? Never. Never. She cannot be. Because if he hasn't evolved or grown from, from our experience and he hasn't improved and he stayed toxic, then hopefully eventually with her own evolution, she's going to realize that it's toxic and it's not for her. And if he has changed and he has improved and he has evolved, then hopefully she's a mirror of his evolution. And then she's a wonderful woman that can be around my children. You see that, guys? Look how simple that is. It really is that simple. And, 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 and if you are not so fortunate to be at that place yet, I'm, I'm going to admonish you to either make some affirmations or include it in your, when you make dua, include it in your prayers, include it in your thought process of really, like envision what a healthy connection looks like, Right? Envision what a healthy connection looks like. Because I'm not here trying to stop nobody's flow. I don't want that person coming to stop my flow. No. Not not the king. I'm, I, don't, I don't want the wrong one trying to block me from the right one. That's why I'm a queen of a new beginning always. Oh, yeah. I've learned that. And I'm going to mention some of these women in my life that has shown me how important that is. One is my mother, Ashe, as the providence. May she just, you know, exist in peace and be at rest and be comforted by her loved ones that she see on the other side. Let me tell you something. My mother had to snatch me up one day and she had to tell me, she was like, as long as you have breath in your body and health, you can always start all over. Slow motion. Yeah, because at the time I was tied up in something heavy right i i even have property that was purchased <laughs> oh man i may be too damn personal to be sharing this with y'all um i was trying to repatriate a long time ago i'm that lady that's why i'm so militant now a long time ago it wasn't the right person for me to be with okay and there was so much investment made. Now, am I going to take that experience and say, uh, I cannot, I can't deal with somebody who is not, and whoever is from where? No. 
No. That's that's what everybody has to get to. You cannot just limit yourself only to one kind. You do have options. Okay? I do believe people that have options. Okay. But I'm trying to tell you that my mindset and my understanding was clear to me a long time ago. That's not a programming. That is something that came that that that's part of me. It's part of me. Right? But my mother advised me, she was like, you know, you can always, you can start again, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z, that's what you need to do, and so, 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 and, and you know what, and I did, it was best advice, best advice ever in my life, right? Another woman I want to acknowledge is my grandmother, my, my maternal grandmother, she is my queen, she is a beautiful, dark-skinned woman, beautiful, dark-skinned woman. She's so beautiful. I love her. I don't love another woman in my life more than I love my maternal grandmother. Um, she is a reason that she is part of the reason I have so much self-esteem. Because it, cause, because I went through so much bullying that went through all through elementary school, all through middle school, all through high school, even to young adulthood. It even tried to rear its head in, in adult womanhood. Right? And if it were not for my role model and me knowing where I came from and knowing what some of her challenges were and knowing some of the obstacles that she was able to successfully move through and navigate and still be the queen she is, and you can always see her cheekbones, honey, because her face is always pleasant, that was my example. I'm so fortunate. Mm. I'm so fortunate. That's the stuff that kept me from being ran through. Right? Because you know people want to run, run you through, run through you. You know that. Some people, are, you know, they just always tapped into their lower self, their animal side, and that's it. They just see you like a piece of ass, and that's it. But I'm going to tell you something. It was that foundation that allowed me to make it through. It's that, it's it's the prayers of my ancestors over my life, you know, my 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 you know other grandmothers that knew of my existence or knew that of ultimately that I would come and they covered me. So here now we are in 2020 and we want to be acting careless and acting like it's somebody else's fault that we make the choices that we make. No, it's not. We gotta own up to that shit. You got to. Right? You got to own up to it. But you got to take and pull strength from where you can take and pull strength from. That's why you got to know where you came from. Which is why I said what I said earlier in the video. So if you were not privy to what I'm talking about in this very second, you got to go back. Right? That's why documentation is important. That's why everything, no. I do believe there's some Pan-Africans that believe like, no, I'm, I'm not going to go and get this kind of paperwork. It don't mean anything. No. But at the same time, you need to put something in place that's going to honor that person that you're going to share your life with and you're going to procreate with. You still got to look after her make sure she's good, right? You still got to have respect for him. I know that's missing. That's missing. And, it, and it's not only, you know, from a large portion of the African-American community. It's missing even, you know, um, West Indians, people in the diaspora and all of that other kind of stuff. I can't take that phone call. Right. But that's the reason why it's missing is because people are not tapping into their higher selves. Right? Earlier in my video I touched upon how um something that really has helped me in my journey is um the faith leadership, right, that I I have. And and why and how we can exist even though I'm not a religious person, right? It transcends it transcends religion, guys. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta appreciate yourself. You gotta find the beautiful things about yourself. Right? Try to enhance what it is that you have. Try. Right? Don't don't throw it all away. Because some of the things that the bits and pieces 
that mainstream media will want you to throw away, it's celebrated. There's a lot of places and people that celebrate what it is that you're trying to throw away. And it's a good place to be when you can appreciate all the pieces and parts of you, right? You gotta speak your truth. You gotta speak your truth. You know, I've experienced negative things here in America. I've experienced negative things back home in my own country where I was born, right? I've experienced things um, from the hands of people that are from the countries that I wanna go to, right? But those negative experiences are not the final say in who I'm gonna be as an individual or how I'm gonna conduct my business or how I'm going to choose to mother and how I'm gonna choose to co-parent and how I'm gonna choose to date and how I'm gonna choose to consult people. Those, no. I, I have to always try to operate from a place of love and understanding. And if you're one of those kind of people where you always want to like talk your friends out of like something that they feel is their choice or whatever the case may be, it's like don't do that. Shame on you. Now if it's a girlfriend and she keeps six months, listen, let me, let me give y'all a little secret. Some of y'all, y'all may have to, it, it may, it may make you um, introspectively look introspectively look at some of your relationships with your friends, right? Because some people are bonded through trauma. I don't like trauma bonding. Yeah. Because the mere fact of somebody wanting to bond through trauma, I'm gonna I'm gonna repost this live in my life designs topic group. I gotta try and get it up on YouTube. But the mere act of trauma bonding is dangerous because trauma bonding, if the person is not about growth, trauma bonding is deeply rooted in remaining in hurt. So because that person is choosing to remain in hurt, that person can ultimately terribly hurt you. And you signed up for it. You co-signed on it. That's why you got to take your time in your relationships and get to really know people. Not everybody's meant to be a close friend. Right? I, I talked about that in past lives and videos and stuff like that. Some people are friends that you just, you know, they pull up on you. You talk to them outside. You lean in the car. Right? Some people are just people that you see when you go out to a party. Some people are people that can come to your house. Some people are, you know, these are people that you cook for. Some people are close enough that you have them in your bedroom. They can visit you on your sick bed, right? Everybody, there's, there's like a, a different realm of friendship. And you got to be careful with the trauma bonding. The trauma bonding is totally a waste of freaking unhealthy time if it is not used as a catalyst or a step stool or a step for you to move forward into healing. You must get to a place of healing. Let me tell you what that looks like sometimes. Because that shit is not easy. It's not pretty. It's ugly. It's like the stuff when you get up from the toilet and you look in the toilet. You don't want everybody else to see what was in the toilet. No. But you know what your ugliness is. That may have been too much of a graphic example. But it, it paints the picture. Right? It may look like People that you love and you hold them in high esteem and they're easily offended by something that you say. And what you're saying, they, that individual wasn't even on your mind when you had that conversation, when you had that dialogue, when you made that comment and the person took it personal. That, some of that, you just gotta let that roll down the hill, how it need to roll down the hill. And if in turn, it destroys the strength or the integrity of the foundation of that relationship, then it's not meant for you. And you gotta be okay with that. And with you being okay with that, you also have to trust in your faith that the Lua is going to send the right people to you so you can find your tribe. Me, there's so many people in my tribe I haven't met yet. So that's the reason why that if somebody comes in my life and they choose to go 
I'm not heartbroken by them exiting and knowing when to depart. I'm not insulted by it. Because you are not made to go on this journey that I need to go on. Or you do not love me enough to step back enough to allow me to experience my journey and go through it without you being judgmental. Right? I had to run that risk too many times. Like, man, my girlfriend, she didn't stop talking to me. What's more important though? Me being true to myself. I can't be a good friend to you if I ain't true to myself. And when I started talking about, you know, honoring these different women in my life, you know, I had to pay attention to these relationships that these mature women in my, in my, in my life had. The relationship that they have with themselves and the public and their family and everything. One of my family members passed. And I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been able to bring myself to properly eulogize her. Right? My Aunt Yuna. Yuna. She... If you are you are, if you're from my paternal family, then you know who Aunt Yuna is. And you know the legacy she has. She was somebody that like she found so much purpose in her mission in life. And she educated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And her work helped educate thousands of Guyanese. She was an educator from Burbese. Um, from 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 um, Burbies, Guyana. She was an educator, and um, she's my grandfather's sister. She loved whatever made her happy. She only had one child, right? What? Her legacy can't be lost because that one child had five children, right? And then those children, most of them, they had their own children. I remember sitting next to my Aunt Yuna at the funeral of another family member. I always acknowledge him whenever I acknowledge my ancestors. He's my grandfather's brother. His name is John Corlett. Yeah. I say John and Mary Corlett. Um, I went to his funeral and I sat next to my Aunt Yuna. And we sat in the back of the church. Her reasoning was she wanted to be close to the toilet and I didn't leave her side, right? Because I remember her, I've been around her before. She's came to visit my family many times. I've had dialogue with her as a young girl, but you know, it's just one of my opportunities to spend time with her as an older adult. And this was a massive funeral. I've never been to a bigger funeral. The funeral for my Uncle John was pretty big. Um, the building could not contain at any time the people that came for any of the services for his funeral. But people came even if they had to pull up in their car, even if they had to park 10 blocks away and walk so they can make it to be outside the church, they did it. And I cannot fathom how many people spoke to her and acknowledged her. And they acknowledged her, either they acknowledged her by her title of her paternal last name, or they acknowledged her by her occupation because she was an educator in Guyana. And fast forward, I ultimately have my own children. And my children and I, my children got to spend time with her on more than one occasion. And she is just such an amazing reminder of where I come from. This is why one of the three main statutes whenever I mentor young women, aside from cooking, is having big lady friends. Now some of those people might be um, your relatives. You know, I'm fortunate where a lot of them were my relatives and I just respect their journey. I respect what, 
life served them and what they what they did with it with what life served them what they ultimately did with it what their legacy is right and the covid ep epidemic is you know is what's going to stop us from being able to properly eulogize her in person at the speed as we would all want to but nonetheless it doesn't remove who she is in our minds she is a, an amazing matriarch to many people in my family and she is somebody that deserves to always be acknowledged and remembered and i'm fortunate to have somebody like knowledge and remember right she lived her life honey how she wanted to okay however she wanted to so she could remain a free woman that's what she did on my father's side a lot of the women they really like me even though many of them are very traditional and they have the husband and you know and, and all of that they're very strong strong women you know, it's like I love, we could be a sucker for love to a point. You know, they're very strong women. Um, even the ones that want to be taken as an ass. <laughs> and I say that in love, right? You know, who knows what it is. It must be just some good. I'm not here to judge nobody, okay? But that's why I'm never jealous of people who they marry. Never. Never. Never, 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 ever. Cause who you think was awesome when you were that age? I don't know. We don't know if he's still awesome. You may think he's awesome. <laughs> you may think he's awesome, you know. But yeah, Una. Talk to, uh, you know, teacher Una. Una Corlett. She's such an amazing woman. And... I don't know how we would ever be able to properly eulogize her. We'll just leave it up to, you know, her own children. Um, but she's an amazing woman. So she's one of those women that, like now she's trans, you know, she's transitioning. Um, but I always knew how I was going to remember her. All right? She's an amazing woman. There's other amazing women that I know, like, I may not have agreed with the way that they've chosen to do things in their life. And the decisions they've made and, you know, but people do what they can with the information they have at that time. That's the reason why if you're a woman that is um, suffering from not being able to fully recover and repair from hurt, that you suffered at the hand of like close family members, like your mom, that kind of thing. You, you know who's really good at this? Um, Yala Van Zandt, I watched her coach people through that. People that complain about how their mothers were drug addicts and she did this and she left me, she abandoned me, you know, and, and, and the, all, the, all the narratives, right? And she coached people through that, through those narratives. And I think it's important that people kind of like adjust how they see things, how they adjust how they see themselves. Um, because if you took the time to acknowledge where somebody was at the time that they made a decision in their understanding at that time, you probably would not be so angry uh, with them, right? Not to say you gotta go and mix up and tie a bundle with them again, <laughs> right? Gotta get y'all some crayon leaves. Okay, you know, I'm not saying you gotta go and tie a bundle with them again. I'm not saying you gotta go and eat their food. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you gotta go and sleep in their house. I'm not saying you gotta go and be a perfect victim for them and lay down and let them slaughter you and kill them, kill you how they want. I'm saying that it'll help you gotta get to that place so you're not angry with them. 
right? Like this, there's a lot of things that women are angry with their mothers and, and mother, uh, motherly role, role models. There's a lot of reasons why people are angry with those, with those individuals, right? And it's based on their own ex experience. And there's nothing that takes away from that experience because your experience is still your experience. It happened to you. You experienced it. You know the value of it. You know the lessons that were learned. You know the scars, where the scars are that are a result of having that experience. But ultimately, it shouldn't stop you from getting to a place where you're no longer angry with those persons, right? You could forgive. Because the forgiveness is about, isn't about them. It's about you. You gotta get to that place. You gotta get to that place where somebody cannot control the narrative of your happiness based on how they treat you. Fuck them. <laughs> Sorry for that. I don't know why you thought you were coming on this live and you wasn't going to get in that phone. Or watching this live. Nobody on this live. Right. And I'm all right with that. But you got to watch this and you can fully take in all the bits and pieces and go down that crooked yellow brick road path that took you from, from the beginning to this part. Everything is related. You get the forgiveness is not for them. The forgiveness is for you. And but but understanding their trauma or the severity of their trauma, it's what's gonna get you to the place of relinquishing anger against them. That that's that's what's gonna get you to that place. That doesn't for, it doesn't it doesn't take away their their responsibility or whatever. But you want to get to the place where you are not angry at somebody who operated in a limited, from a limited place. There are individuals that were not happy with, um, with my past relationships. Or past relationship. And they did everything in their trivial, weak power to cause kinks and cause a problem. But for me, <laughs> I see that this ultimate path that I'm on, I cannot take everybody with me. That doesn't mean I can't still love them. But that does they, that I can't take everybody with me. And I'm all right with that. That doesn't mean I love you any less. I love you. Share my love. Spread the love. Sending love and light. Love yourself. I'm all, that's, I'm, I'm all about that. I don't care what you see in these lies. Some of these lies, I'd be, I be militant, honey. <laughs> I'd be like, mm, I'm ready to... Right? Because my, my, my story is really about you being true to yourself. But I want you to be able to get to that place where you can be true, true to yourself. And you can like really operate in a place of like forgiveness. Because if you can operate from a place of forgiveness, there's people that you'll be able to release. And then when you release them, that's when your inner sunshine comes through. That's where it comes through. That's what attracts the new love. That's what attracts the new friends. That's what attracts the new opportunities. Right? That's what allows your praise to be loud and clear and crystal crystal. Oh, Lord, he hears it. Huh? That's what allows it. You gotta get to, you gotta work through that. I have my moments. I won't lie. It's human. It's human. It's the shit that we eat. It's the stuff we eat, man. Listen. You know, <laughs> that's why that's why detoxing and cutting out certain things out of your diet is important. And taking certain kind of supplements and Finding, you know, homeopathic and natural ways to heal yourself with intake and ingest and all of that and medicate yourself with. Because you want to be able to be at a place where you can operate, not operate, because operation may take a different um, 
it may it may hold on to something different. But where you can kind of like experience and love and communicate in in a in a in a positive way. Hope you didn't get lost here in that rabbit hole. You know that that inner light that you allow to shine. That is what like attracts the good people to you. That's what attracts the new experiences to you if you want that. Because not every day is a good day. Some days you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like caught up on the old stuff that somebody did to you and you're upset about it, as you rightfully should be, right? But then when it stops you from being able to um, fully enjoy the full, the dimensions of all the tastes of something new. That's what's stopping you from being able to enjoy all the dimensions and the taste of something new. Is, is, is the old stuff we hold on to. That's like when you go through a purge um, or you do a detox. If you guys want a detox product, it's, it's in my link, the ISOT and all of that. But you go through, a, you know, types of detoxes and stuff like that and fasting and stuff like that. Your mind can think clearer. That's why, that's why a whole lot of niggerish shit happened after people was out in the streets fighting and obtaining these damn chicken sandwiches. You understand? It's like that is the stuff that that fills, that clogs up your, your, your thought process. Just constantly wanting to only eat the wrong stuff. I understand, you know, where the need comes from and the taste and being peckish and wanting to, you know, why I have a taste for that and I have a taste for that. But that can't be an everyday, every way kind of life all the time. No. Some days you might need to eat raw. Some days you may need to just not eat nothing but berries. Some days you may need to just make everything liquid and blend something up and eat it. Some days you may need, you know, a heavy, heavier kind of protein. Right? Some days you have to take this because this is what's convenient at this time and my hunger is stopping me being able to think, whatever. But it cannot be that way all the time. Right? There's too many levels to you. There's too many dimensions to you. For you to think that that is right for every day of your life. Every day of your life you're having something that you shouldn't be having every single day. Every day? Come on. No. You gotta stop that. So, you know, in this live, we tackled a few things. Um, if you haven't watched Brother Ishmael talk from the sermon that he did the Sunday after his father's 4th of July speech, go and catch that. If you haven't caught his father's 4th of July speech, go and catch that. Um... Some channels on YouTube you can watch is maybe Finding Yeruhu, um, Brexit, uh, no, not Brexit, Exit, no, Blacksit, B L A X I T, um, Muta Baruka. If you could handle that, especially if you're a West Indian, especially if you classify yourself as a West Indian, you, you need to unfog your mind. And if your mind needs unfogging or un then you need to be catching on and watching some Muta Baruka. Somebody, sometimes um, his videos are posted by somebody named um, Basie, somebody Basie. And then there's another person with a West African name. But, you know, his, his, his um, radio broadcasts are shown on more than one, on more than one, egg, more than one platform, I guess, I would say. So I know he's on radio. I don't know how to find him on radio. I, whenever I catch his product, I you catch his, his information and his messages, I catch it, you know, via audio, you know, like on YouTube or whatever. Who else can I suggest that you guys watch? If you need interior design services and consultation, I do e-design services. My website should be done now. I got to talk with my developer today and see how we're coming along with that. I've been working so hard on that, right? That is on ProvidenceLifeDesign.com. Um, I have some things that are coming up I can't wait to share with you and um, keep the faith if you're doing the homeschooling with our children you gotta 
they got to cut down the screen time, guys. Cut down the screen time. I have a whole video about that. It's in my group, um, Life Design Topics. And it's posted on my YouTube page. If you have, if you do not follow me on YouTube, my YouTube channel is Providence Life Design. Um, the playlist of Life Design Topics, the things that have nothing to do with interior design, just like interpersonal relationships and all of that. And everything else is interior design related. Um, you know that I write, I'm an author, so um, I write, I blog, some of my blogs are on medium.com, and, um, and you will have access to my, my, my books, and my controversial, you know, commentary controversial because people don't want to get to the root and the truth and the real and the bottom and the scrape of it. They don't they don't like that. Everybody wants to sit on the surface shit. They want to sit on the stuff that the government from the American government from the 50s imposed on everybody and that's where they're stuck at. No. It is bigger and deeper than that. Right? Have grown people conversation with your children. Yep. Use big words. They be like, what is that? You tell them what it means. Don't don't dumb down your conversation for them babies. Let them understand, let them know from now. Right? And there's political reasons why behind that too. It's very, very important. Um, what else do I want to leave with you? If you're in the South Florida area and you're looking for um, a transfer transformational place to worship right and you're not and you're not stuck in white Jesus religion <laughs> Lord you're not stuck on that like you just a bit more evolved than that okay um, then you're welcome to come and worship where I worship that's in Miami Gardens, Word of Life Bible Ministry. My prophet, his name is uh, E.K. Kelly Osagbavo. He is, you know what I appreciate about him? This is what I appreciate about him. He is, he reads a lot. And you can tell, it comes out. People that take the time to educate themselves. Yeah. I don't like somebody who don't educate. Like I can't. I can't. I can't. This is this is why the, the love life is all dried up or was dried up. Cause I, I don't claim that anymore. That's done. We done with that. Okay. Auntie is ready for love. <laughs> the right one though. Right freaking one. Cause I don't got, you know, you know the kind of lady I am. But People that take the time to educate themselves and and open to learning, I like that. And that's in everything. That's in that's in my taste of men. That's in my friends. That's in friendships that um, exceed the standard run of time. You know the ones that run themselves or run their course, or they cannot be revived. Right? I have friends that I don't talk to them all the time or every month. I have friends that, hell, a whole year could go by and I don't speak to them. Right? But that doesn't mean that they they don't know that I don't love them. I love them with all my heart. You know, and, and when we when we, pow, when we pow wow again, we have real honest conversation and dialogue. You know, and it's not, you know, so, so if you're in the South Florida area and you can manage that because it's in Miami Gardens, that's a place for you. If you're squeamish, if you, if you are firm, staunch, kojic, if you come from that firm, staunch, kojic background and you think that that's the only thing that is right in this world, then no, that, then that's not the congregation for you. It's not the teaching for you. 
um, it's not even the kind of it's not even the kind of liberation you deserve to have from the attachments <laughs> from the attachments and un unhealthy connections you have ancestrally. You don't deserve that freedom from it if you can't get past that. So you got to get past that. You got to like there's some personal graduation, you get evol evolution that has to happen for you to even be able to like sit under certain kind of teaching and listen to certain people talk. That's why some of y'all, y'all don't want to hear what, you know, the Honorable, Red, you know, Louis and Farrakhan has to say, right? Because cause, cause y'all so brainwashed. Yep. If you took offense to that statement, oh, well, I can't help you with that. That's all right. You'll be okay. But that's why some people can't listen to him, right? They think that whatever, whatever, boom, he utters, they think it's all wrong. Yeah, your mind is in the mud, unfortunately. And your mind is so deeply buried in the mud, it's on the, it's, there's also concrete and brick and everything on top of it. Because you cannot even be able to, to get watering from other things that can also make your mind work differently. You know? Like, I know personally, like, the congregation I choose to worship with, like, if it, if it wasn't that con congregation... And I stay here in Florida, I, I will probably go and go to church at all. At all. I'm not, see, I'm not that lady. I'm not that lady like I ain't complete unless I'm in a church. I'm not her. I'm not her. She is not me. <laughs> right? So, if you need something trans, transformational, that's, that's it. This is not a commercial. Cause it's not for everybody but if you're if you're not trying to you know um if you're not trying to have good change like change 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 that digs down deep to the root no matter what manifests then you're not ready for it and that's okay you may be ready for it later like in three months from now or a year from now okay or, or tomorrow Right? Or six months down the road. Right? Or, or by Christmas. Right? Granted, you don't believe that Santa Claus, a white fat man, is real. <laughs> no. Stop telling your kids that shit. Please. Please stop that. Listen. It be my friend's children, my children... The minute they, the minute, the second they want to come and talk to me about some blasted Santa Claus, who? He don't exist. That's garbage. That's how I talk to four-year-olds, yes. Mm -hmm, me. So keep them, hide them. You don't want me talking to them. That is garbage. Let that be the original mysticism for people from, that originated from the Caucasus Mountains. But for me, that is not my own. That is not for me. That's not for my children. That ain't for my grandchildren. Nope. Because every day is Christmas. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day is Mother's Day. Every single day. We can discuss later if every day is Father's Day. <laughs> well, we can have that discussion another time. Okay, but those other three things, every day, it's Christmas Day, every day is Thanksgiving, every day it's Mother's Day. So all that shit about the blasted fairy, cute fairy, and Santa Claus is cock of farts. And you must tell your children that. However you choose to word it. I may not be the right person to word it for you, okay? You may not want to take direction from me because I, I, I live for the truth. I live for it. And the children that are close to me, I, that's how I talk to them, whether they related or not related. What you want me to do with it? <laughs> that's how I be talking to little people. Because they understand that. Yup, yours too, too. Them same ones that sit up underneath uh, a, a, a monitor, they always on the screen time, they doing more than two hours of screen time a day. Yep, those. Yep, they can handle that. They can handle that. Right? Because all that sci-fi and virtual reality world un compounded on top of all that fake mysticism of what a freaking white man being Santa Claus, that's a bunch of shit. 
and y'all need to stop that. Don't teach them kids that. Okay, that's your mama went and worked some overtime and she went and got that. Or this is what she did with her resources and this is what she's produced. Or you don't need all that. Every, every day is Christmas. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day we're grateful and thankful. Every day is Mother's Day. Because whether our children are physically with us or they're with somebody else, our children are always here at the forefront of our mind. That's the reason I have a whole video about dating as a single parent. Do you know that I have a video about dating as a single parent? You probably don't because you're not, or well, you should be. You need to be subscribed to my, my YouTube channel, Rather Than Psych Design. You need to be joined up with my group, Life Design Topics. Right? You need to be following me on Instagram at Providence Psych Design. Right? Because I do not hold back on, on conversation about that. You, you gotta, you guys gotta get with it. Get with it. Because I, I, you know what my personal fear is that so many of you are, are, are going to choose to want to remain in ignorance because it's the easiest thing and you're going to get so lost behind. So now when people are talking about things that can transform and tr that can transform your thinking, can change an opportunity for you, you can't even follow along. Because you think what somebody who is only living to oppress you, you think that that person has your well-being in mind to fear qua. No, it, they do not. Okay, they do not. You better get into the sense of self and know who you are and know who you are in God and have a relationship with God and, you know, and all of that stuff. And that's for understanding, you know? And all you're getting, get understanding. I know you know that, that Bible scripture. And all you're getting, get understanding, people. Don't, do not be conformed by this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's all Bible scripture, right? For you, for you Christian. Even the Bible is telling you to, to, to make sure your mind is free so you can welcome the true utterances of God. And in the midst of that, pray for discernment. Ask for discernment. So you can know how to pick and pull from that stuff. Because I'm going to tell you something. I remember when there was a, um, it was scandal. Scandal. <laughs> I know it happened in Jamaica. They had a pastor in Jamaica, but they had a pastor here stateside. And he was basically cussing women. Then they had one in Africa too. Cussing women out from the pulpit, telling them how terrible they are. What? You see, sometimes you you not sometimes all the time. You gotta always have your wits about you and have discernment. Because if you don't have discernment, you're gonna over there. You're gonna be over there internalizing this stuff. That people are saying that may not necessarily come from God. And you're going to be over there following it like it's gospel. How does that apply to your life? No. You've got to be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Right? Seek to serve the Lord. Serve God. Serve the Almighty. Love and truth and understanding. Aim for that. Don't, don't, don't aim for being deeply rooted into something and processes that were created by an oppressed people that were told that where they come from is no good. Okay? All right. That's what I'm going to say about that. That's what I'm going to say about that. But I love you. Sending love and light. Um, I'm going to wrap up the live now. I'm glad I was able to chat with you because the little people are at their own situation today. And they would not have allowed me to be great. Mm -mm. They would not have. <laughs> because they're men. They're men with testosterone. And they think it is all about them. Those are my sons. Man, listen, 
They got these days between the homeschooling, your work, the laundry, the making of the beds, the cooking the food, that you don't even want to doll yourself up. You just be so tired. That's how you gotta pour into you. Pour into you, talk positively to you. Stop trying to be everything to everybody and you or nothing to you. That's bullshit. Okay? How you wanna be how you wanna be something to everybody else and you treat you bad. This is this is why many people they take offense easily. They take offense to what they hear, because they don't know who they are. And the reason they don't know who they are because they don't even like themselves. Because they don't like themselves, they don't get to know themselves. Why would you want to get to know somebody you don't like? Never. Right? Unless you're, a, unless you're an evolved thinking person, yeah, you kind of do want to get to know somebody a little bit even if you don't like them because you want to kind of understand how they tick so you, can, so you can compartmentalize their madness because then ultimately... You can see what use of good they can be, whether or not you choose to have a close relationship or not, if you follow. I'm just going to drop that in your spirit. But you got to like you. Because if you don't like you, you're not going to get to, you not, you are not going to want to get to the truth of understanding who you are and where you come from. And, and finding the time and place and, and, and precedence to forgive all of the transgressions that yourself has against yourself. And forgive the, the people in your past that's hurt you and wronged you. You got to know they themselves are victims of trauma. That's why trauma bonding, if you haven't been with me, if you jumped on at this place, that's why trauma bonding is no good. Trauma bonding is good for the moment. Like, let's have a connection. Those are the sister circles, right? That's why sister circles are good. But beyond the sister circle, where you want you and I to be in contact on a bi-weekly basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis, we have to be able to bond on something that is much more useful than trauma. What are we doing with that energy? Don't be jealous, people. Don't. Just find your own tribe. Maybe that person's tribe is not the tribe you're supposed to join. You know? And that's okay. That's all right. Because if you understand how okay that is, you will be able... You'll be able to know where somebody was coming where they were coming from when they came in your life at the time where they did a lot of damage in your life you don't want to continue with them right i i've had those experiences before when i was younger because i if you've been following me you know i've experienced bullying a large portion of my life and outside of school it happened even in young young woman friendships and it did not well, friendships, I use that word loosely. There was a woman that I was friends with. And in my mind, she's always going to be a friend. She was a best friend for a large portion of my life. Her name is Tashai. Right? I don't know if she follows, I don't know if she follows me or if she's on, you know, Facebook or whatever. But um she was one of my friends from Boston. And she was such an integral part of my life. But let me tell you what that connection produced. Our relationship was healthy, she and I. If she didn't like something I did, she let me know. And then I had to be okay with her being upset and she would ultimately forgive me. And if she did something I didn't like, I would tell her. Or if she, like, you know, it was a very healthy relationship. We were friends for many, many years. But there was friends that she trauma bonded, trauma bonded with. And those friendships continued in trauma bonding. And when my friend went off to handle another season of her life, these people thought I was fair game. 
to come and trauma bond with or abuse starts out as trauma bonding and then it turns into that and these people were upset with me because at some point my ancestors started speaking in my ears and told me that it was not okay for me to be abused for the sake of friendship fuck a friendship and like I'm talking like people like really vex with you cause, 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 because you won't let them use you. I've been a victim of that. I'm okay with talking about it. We progress. Alua is great. I'm here to talk about it. Right? And I won't call those persons names. But because, and the reason I won't call those persons names is because I even respect the fact that they, up to this day, may not have act actually repaired or even sought repair in that trauma. They just operated from a place that they thought was right. But it was not right for me as a friend because I'm a person, I'm like real generous with my love. You know, like I'm real generous with it. Like my friends, like how you act, however you are, that's how I love you. Unless, until you try to pull me into cosign on some bullshit... Then I'm going to be like, nah, sis, we ain't going to keep talking about this fucked up relationship a year later. You should have left his ass four months in when you realized it was a problem. I'm that girl. I'm not here. I'm not a yes woman. Right? But I love my friends how they are. I love them. Just love them. Just how they are. Right? Even some of them are skittish as hell. Some days they my friends. Some days they not. But that's okay. Because I understand how people's experiences and what they're going through, everybody has to handle their stuff at their pace. Right? But some of those friendships that developed when I lived in Boston, they were not the healthiest. They were not. And when it was time to let them go, adios, deuces, peace. I was out. No card. No call. No, we don't got to be Facebook friends. I had one. She was all upset. Listen, she was so upset, she confronted me about it. I happened to go to Boston one day with one of my best friends. Um, she was living there. She was promoting. This is back in, this is a long time ago. This is back in the days when, like, this is, this is dating me. But, honey, I was so ooh, sexy. You don't even be knowing how sexy you are. But that's how people hating on you. And you don't even, you don't even see yourself through the same glasses as other people see you. But anyway, honey, snatch. Listen, auntie was just hot to try. You couldn't tell me shit. You couldn't tell me shit. I still I look back at them pictures. I'm like, oh my goodness. But anyway, I remember going to an event one night in Boston. And I came across one of these people that were one of my closest friends. And I didn't like ignore her or anything like that. Like I engaged with her. I was so happy to see her. And she was angry that I did not want to follow her on Facebook or be friends. I don't know, something like that. And she was upset about it. And I told her, like in a calm tone, this is after the party. I was like, I said, that's okay. It's all right, though. That doesn't mean I, don't, that don't mean I love you less. You understand? Know not everybody is equipped for that. But I was already on that road to enlightenment, and that's that's why I was able to, to be able to say something like that to her and not be able to ignore her or walk away from it, act like I didn't know her or do whatever stupidness people do when they're out in public and somebody that used to know them from a past life recognizes them. No, you need to own up to it. Own up to it. And I was okay with owning up to it. That doesn't take away the role that she played in my life when we were friends at that time. But can she go with me where I'm going and the way I'm thinking? Probably not. Here's something else about myself. And I had to, you know, it, I think it took my sister to tell me. She's like, you know, Shamrondi. She told me whatever she saw. She's like, you know, this is how you need to see yourself, blah, blah, blah. She says, because you're a this and you're a that. Because things that people were doing in that year, let's say, let's say the year was 2016. I had already did it back in 1999. 
if women were wearing their hair a certain way in 2014 or 2018, I had already did it back in 2009. There's things I was doing in 2010 that it didn't hit really mainstream until, and I know, and, and, I, and I can remember these time frames based on certain things that happened in friendships and stuff like that. And I wasn't privy about it. I just did what made me happy. But there was things I did in 2009, like the way I chose to dress, the way how I chose to adorn myself, like what my beauty, my personal beauty standard was. Like there was things I was doing in 2010 that people are now figuring out in 2019 and 2020. And I was doing it since 2010, 2009, 2011. So we are not all on this. We're not all driving on the highway at the same speed. Some of us are in the hove lane, but we know when to come out the hove lane and just travel on the fast lane. Or some of us are in the slow lane because we know we need to exit off the highway at some point to go and take care of X, Y, and Z. But we got the speed. We got our pass on our car. We got our sun pass. We got our you know our highway our highway toll apparatus. So when we're ready to kind of like switch and move on to the to the hove lane and the fast lane, wherever we are, we can manage the cost that comes with it. We can manage the challenges. So I'll say all that I have to say, like, you just got to like, just really get to just love people where they're at. You do. And you got to just love people. And you got to love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you can't freaking love people. You can't. And you got to love yourself even with all the imperfections. Like, you know what, let me work on this. Let me work on this. Let me see how I can improve it. You know, but true and true, I got to love me. You can't even love God. You know, and that's what religion is. Religion is people who just want to be totally indoctrinated and follow. Because that's the rule. They don't trust themselves to make their own rules, some of them. Some of them, they're in religion because a lot of, you know, the source of their power comes from their faith. I love that. I, I respect it. I respect it. And because I respect it, I respect a lot of people's faith. Right? I love my friends as they are. When somebody's season is over, bye. If you want to come back and find me, I'm here with open arms. You probably can't bring that bread, you know, probably don't know my kids, probably don't, you know, or you probably not privy to certain sides of my life, but that doesn't mean I still can't come in and bring a hundred when I'm talking to you, you know, and we're engaging, but you got, you got to, and, and I say that, I say these things not to brag, it's not self, it's not that, it is for you to kind of like figure out how do you want to gauge new people coming into your life, can you gauge new people coming into your life that way? Because you want to be able to love people how they are. And you want to be accepted that way. That's the only way those real relationships that can benefit you can truly live. How they can truly manifest themselves and produce great results. All right. People, my son wrote a book, guys. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I'm proud mama. I'm so blessed. Those of you that actually want to have children, I'm always surprised when I meet women that are like grown and they want to have more kids. <laughs> the society ain't set up the way it used to be. But those of you that want your own, may Ulua answer your prayer. May he meet you at your need. May he give you the benefit of experiencing the fruit of your womb, if that's what you really want. Those that of you that really want to be married, um, I pray that Alua gives you the desires of your heart and that you meet somebody that can roll with you in tandem how you want to be rolled with roll around with <laughs> okay 
Because that's a scary thing. Women, we can just love what we can love to a fault. He over there taking you through though. We, we got to be careful with those guys. We got to be careful with those. Some people are called to a certain kind of ministry and some are not to be given a job that's not meant for them. <laughs> You know, talk grown women talk, talk grown adult talk to your kids, talk that grown adult stuff. All right, let me come off this live now. And thank you guys to everybody that popped in. Thank you to everybody that stopped in. Um, I think something's changed with the current Facebook. But I hope ultimately, you know, share the video. Share the video with other people. Um... You can reach me on Instagram, Providence, at Providence Life Design. My YouTube channel is Providence Life Design, is on Providence Life Design, okay? I have a Facebook group here called uh, Life Design Topics, and I'm an interior designer. My interior design, I have an interior design page on here on Facebook, Providence Life Design. And, um, and then also my publishing, right? We're working on getting that, um, like the proper... What do you call it? All the different things that you need to have in place for those things to sit and live. But the work is already created, you know. Now I understand why writers like Maya Angelou and people like that, they would talk about what their writing process is. The writing process of they, they kept hotel rooms for years. Because you need, you need alone time with your thoughts to work through things, to write. There has to be some level of seclusion. Um, it's sometimes it's hard to sometimes it's hard to write about things that's not burning in you. It's just a thought because you're so preoccupied with all the different responsibilities and things that are going on. So that could be hard. Um, yeah, that could be hard. But you know, we live, we grow, we evolve. So I told you all the ways that you can reach me. Um, click my link tree. I try to keep that as up to date as possible. Um, you want things for your health. I have that on my link tree. That's the, um, my Total Life Changes project products. Um, anything else, interior design, anything else, you know, you, you want to like catch up with me about. I don't think I have like a link to my blogs there on there from medium.com. But I gotta figure out if that's where they're always gonna live or am I gonna, we're working those details out, right? I to be hard at work between the homeschooling and the cooking and the laundry and the managing of the little people where they're not managing me. I try, I try. So I love you, I'm sending you love and light. Take time and get grounded, be peaceful and um, acknowledge your ancestors, know yourself. Read your Bible and all you're getting, get understanding. Stay blessed. This is Shimrondi from Providence Life Design.